Hello, I'm Carla Kim. I'm the PI and the senior author on this study. And I'm Stephen Curtis. I'm a graduate student and the first author on this paper. Our paper shows for the first time that the tumor propagating cells across lung cancers of differing genotypes are not identical. Importantly, to start this study, we began by developing a robust transplantation assay using an intratracheal delivery that nicely recapitulates primary tumor development in the recipient animals. Using this assay, we determined that the SCA1 positive population of cells from tumors that express oncogenic KRAS and have lost a tumor suppressor P53 are in fact tumor propagating cells. This was the first identification of a true cancer stem cell in lung cancer that showed both self-renewal and differentiation properties. Strikingly, in two different genetic models of lung adenocarcinoma, one with wild type P53, another with mutant EGFR, both of which represent patient populations that are seen clinically, we were not able to use SCOT1 to enrich for tumor propagating cells. Therefore, these results highlighted the importance of genotype and affecting the tumor propagating cell phenotype. Currently, we are focusing our efforts on understanding the mechanisms that uh, drive tumor propagation and how these same mechanisms might play a role um, with different genetic drivers in different models. We hope that our work will stimulate others to separate their patient samples by genotype when they are looking for cancer stem cells. We believe that our work has broad implications for combining the idea of patient subsets separated by genotype and targeting cancer stem cells for therapy. And we hope that together this might help to achieve a better personalized medicine. We are honored to have been chosen as the 2010 Best Paper in Cell Stem Cell, and we now invite you to watch a short video that describes our work for a more general audience. My lab is interested in the general question of how stem cells play a role in the lung and in lung cancer. When we set out to perform this study, what we really wanted to know was whether or not lung cancers have cancer stem cells. And the idea behind this is that those cells that we call the cancer stem cells might be the most important cells that we need to target drugs against within a cancer. In our lab, we've been making use of mouse models of lung cancer that allow us to control at the genetic level when the tumor starts and what genetic changes have been made to create that tumor. This allows us to do it in a much more controlled fashion than we could with uh, lung cancer samples from patients, for example. In the very early part of our studies, we started with looking at a mouse model that we call the KRAS lung tumor model. And this mouse model mimics a mutation that's found very frequently in human lung cancers, and in fact the most common type of human lung cancer, which is called adenocarcinoma. We began by taking those tumor cells and using what we call cell sorting technology to isolate certain fractions of those tumors. And we did that by testing them for one molecule that is called SCA1. At the same time as doing this experiment, we were also looking in a second mouse model of lung cancer, one in which KRAS was mutated, but also the tumor suppressor P53 was deleted. In our studies, only the SCA1 positive cells from the KRAS P53 tumors were able to regrow a tumor after multiple rounds of transplant in mice. And what that meant to us was that the SCA1 positive cells from the KRAS P53 tumors were in fact a cancer stem cell. The fact that we we're testing both of these models at the same time led us to make the other important finding of our study, and that was that one genotype of lung cancer might have cancer stem cells and perhaps another doesn't. So our hope is that we can find drug targets in each specific kind of cancer stem cell and in each of those lung tumor genotypes. The next important steps following up on our study is we'd like to identify drugs that might specifically kill off the cancer stem cells. And the second important step will be to test this idea in human lung cancers. 
Many people may ask, why haven't we found a cure for lung cancer or other lung diseases yet? And how can stem cell research help with that? Why hasn't the funding already been put into stem cells led to a cure? And I think that one quick answer is that even with our study, we're finding that these diseases are very complex. We only discovered lung stem cells five years ago. And now we've just discovered a lung cancer stem cell. Because of the sheer numbers and devastating nature of lung cancer, we know that it's so important to answer these questions. And I think we're just at the beginning of the potential of what stem cells can teach us. With additional funding for stem cell research, we'll be able to continue to make important progress in cancer research and other disease areas.